Hello. In an earlier video, I showed how the MOSFET can be used as a switch to control large loads from a microbit Arduino or Raspberry Pi. In this video, I'll look at some of the other uses of the MOSFET, showing how it can be used to change the voltage as a buffer or as a logic level converter. This includes how a MOSFET can be used to drive RGB LEDs, sometimes known as NeoPixels. In this video, I'll be mainly focusing on the Raspberry Pi and Arduino, which have two different voltages. The Microbit and Raspberry Pi Pico are both 3.3 volt devices as well. So where I say Raspberry Pi, that can also cover the Microbit and the Raspberry Pi Pico. First, I'll cover a little theory, but then we'll be getting into practical circuits a little later in the video. This is just going to cover the basics here. As a quick recap, MOSFETs are a type of transistor with three pins, a drain, gate, and a source. When used as a switch, then when a positive voltage is applied to the gate, this turns the MOSFET on and allows a current to flow from the drain to the source. The diagram shown is for an N-channel MOSFET, which is commonly used for switching circuits, but there's another type, the P-channel MOSFET. You'll notice that these diagrams look differently to the symbols shown previously. As this is a more advanced topic, I'll be using a more advanced tool for creating the diagrams. In the previous video, I used Fritzin. In this video, I'll be using KeyCAD. The symbol on the left is for the N-channel MOSFET. This is the same as the previous diagram, but for two differences. The first difference is the inclusion of the diode, which is shown in the reverse direction. Due to the way the MOSFET is made, the material forms a diode in the reverse direction. This is used to represent that. The other difference is that there is now a circle around the symbol. This is a common variance for the circuit symbols, as some people include the circles and others do not. It makes more sense here when showing the diode, as it indicates that it's all part of one package. It makes it clear that it's not a separate diode that's been added later. The one on the right has an arrow going out of the central channel to indicate that this is a P-channel MOSFET. The direction of the diode is also reversed. Effectively, the P-channel MOSFET is a complement of the N-channel MOSFET. So where the N-channel MOSFET needs a positive voltage at the gate to turn on and zero volts to turn it off, the P-channel is turned on with a negative gate voltage compared to the source drain voltage. I'll be using the N-channel MOSFET in the practical examples. These are some of the kind of devices we may want to connect together. These are all digital devices that have inputs or outputs which take a logic signal. The problem is that different devices have a different idea of what a logic high is. In particular, when you look at hobby electronic projects, some devices work at 3.3 volts and some at 5 volts. The Raspberry Pi and Microbit are both 3.3 volt devices, whereas some other devices such as NeoPixels and the Arduino Uno work at 5 volt. Some of these can communicate without a formal level converter or will just work, but I'll be looking at how we can use MOSFETs to ensure reliable and safe connections between the devices. First we will look at going from a Raspberry Pi to a NeoPixel. I will include practical examples of this circuit, including circuits created on a prototyping board and part of the printed circuit board of the Disco Like project. Then we'll look at communications between a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino, which needs to be bidirectional. I'll show a practical example, which ties in with an earlier video I created on using SPI communications. It's based around a commercial product provided by Adafruit and there's a similar product by SparkFun. I'll be explaining how it works. In this, I'm going to look at driving NeoPixels from the Raspberry Pi. The GPIO output from the Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volts, but for full brightness, the NeoPixels need to be driven at 5 volts. This is one of those areas where you may be able to get away with connecting the 3.3 volt direct to the NeoPixel data in. In many cases, this will just work, but not always. When looking at driving NeoPixels outside my house, I had problems with voltage drop and distance. I could only get this working using a level shifter, so I'd recommend increasing the voltage to 5 volts for reliability. This is the schematic diagram I'm going to use. Again, I'm using KeyCAD to create the diagram. This is known as an inverting circuit, as the output will be the opposite of the input. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. The input, shown on the left, is where the 3.3 volt logic of the Raspberry Pi GPIO enters, and the output goes to the data in of the NeoPixel. When we set the input to 0 volts, then the MOSFET is switched off. This means there is no current flowing through the transistor 
and the output is determined by the resistor RL. The resistor is connected to the 5 volt supply so the output will be at 5 volts. This is assuming that the output connects to another circuit with a high impedance. If the input is now 3.3 volts then the transistor switches on which effectively shorts the output to ground resulting in the output being 0 volts. Current can flow from the 5 volt supply through resistor RL but assuming the resistance of the MOSFET switched on is much lower than the impedance of anything connected to the output then the output will be 0 volts. This is an inverting circuit but in this case that can be dealt with in software which I'll mention later. So how do we choose the values of resistor RL? I didn't use an exact formula to calculate that value but I just choose what I chose to be an appropriate value. In the first state when the MOSFET is turned off then it needs to be considerably smaller than the resistance of the next stage so that the voltage dropped across RL is very small. On the other hand when the MOSFET is switched on then it needs to be a high enough resistance to restrict the current through the resistor which would otherwise be wasted energy. You should also consider that a higher resistor would be more susceptible to noise and can create a delay if the next stage is a high capacitance. A good range would be between about 1 kilo ohm and 5 kilo ohms. I chose 2.2 kilo ohms as that's around the middle of that range and uses about 2 milliamps when the MOSFET is switched on. Depending upon what you are connecting to and the frequency used you can look at different resistance sizes but this works well with the air pixels. The resistor RG is used to protect the Raspberry Pi GPIO ports. Whilst the gate of the MOSFET has a high input impedance it does have a capacitance effect between the gate and the source junction. This means that when initially switched on there could be a significant surge of current which could damage the Raspberry Pi GPIO port. In my earlier video on the MOSFET switch I calculated the resistance to limit the current to 16 milliamps maximum that the Raspberry Pi could provide which is about 220 ohms. I however then chose 470 ohms as I was switching multiple devices I didn't want to exceed the maximum of 50 milliamp total across the GPIO pins. A larger resistor could be used but that would introduce a delay in switching on the MOSFET. On the other hand it's also possible to omit the resistor completely but I think it's better to include a resistor there to avoid damage to the Raspberry Pi. That really is all that is needed to create a voltage level converter for NeoPixels. Just three components or in fact two if you omit RG. I did say this was inverting. If you wanted to invert it back again then inverting the signal again would become non-inverting. So you could just repeat it for a second stage but without an additional RG. There are alternative ways of creating a non-inverting buffer though. We don't need to do this here for NeoPixels as we can just invert the signal in software instead. Here are some NeoPixel buffer circuits I've created. The first shows a breadboard version using through-hole technology NeoPixels. The next is made up on some strip board. I've also created one using a Raspberry Pi prototyping board which includes the connectors for external power and connecting to the NeoPixels. Finally there is a PCB which was created for a disco light project. The components at the bottom of the board are used for the NeoPixels. The rest of the board is for the MOSFET switches that I discussed in a previous video. I'll include in some links in the description to some of these circuits. For this video I'm just covering the hardware side. But I've already created another video showing a graphical user interface I created for the NeoPixels. This includes an inverting option to allow us to use the inverting or non-inverting buffer as appropriate. I've included a link for that video in the description. At this point I'm going to talk about open drain buffer outputs. These can be used to drive loads from a higher source voltage than the preceding circuit. So it's an appropriate fit for this video. But the real reason I'm talking about it here will make more sense when I talk about bidirectional level shifters intended for I2C. Open drain outputs are sometimes used as an output stage from an integrated circuit, but I'm going to start by talking about this using discrete components first. Taking the NeoPixel output buffer, we could use that same circuit to switch a different load. Imagine we had an LED that we wanted to power from a 5 volt source using our 3.3 volt output from a Raspberry Pi. You could put the load in parallel with the resistor RL which would work but would result in current flowing through RL which is just wasted. So how about removing RL? Now we are back to the same diagram as I used in my earlier video on a MOSFET switch. 
What we can do is have the MOSFET in the output stage of, say, an integrated circuit, but the LED separate, which is what you get if you find an integrated circuit which refers to as being open drain. You may also hear about open collector, which is the same, but using the bipolar junction transistor instead. The integrator circuit then has the ability to switch a load that is connected to a positive voltage, which may not necessarily be the same power supply as the integrator circuit uses. These can be useful for powering fairly small loads such as LEDs. The key thing about this is that the supply voltage of the Raspberry Pi or other devices at 3.3 volts, but it can drive a load from a circuit with a different voltage, which in this case is 5 volts. Now we can go back to the concept of the logic level shifter. The main problem with the circuits discussed so far is that they can only work in one direction. They could be used to drive the NeoPixels as they don't feed anything back, but in the case of serial communications between the Raspberry Pi and Arduino, then we need the information to go in two directions. The 3.3 volts from the Raspberry Pi needs to be increased to 5 volts for the Arduino, and the 5 volt from the Arduino needs to be decreased to 3.3 volts. In circumstances you can get away without using a logic level shifter by driving the connection at 3.3 volts then the 5 volt devices can usually detect that as a valid signal although that might not be reliable. A bigger concern is that if 5 volt is received on the Raspberry Pi GPIO which is not 5 volt tolerant then that can damage the Raspberry Pi. The example shown here will be explained in terms of I squared C which is a serial communications protocol I squared C uses the open drain output that I've just explained. It works by having the output pulled up high by an external resistor, which was RL on the diagram. The high is therefore the default, which results from not outputting a low. The low is achieved by pulling the output down to, low, to zero volts. Now that I've explained that, we can look at how we can create a bidirectional level shifter, which can support different voltages on the same bus. There are several different commercial logic level shifters available. The version I'm going to be using is based on the Adafruit I2C level converter, which is useful for other protocols as well as S such as SPI, which I used in a different video. These boards are not expensive, so if you're looking to use these in line between two devices, then it's easiest just to buy one of these level shifter circuits and put them between your devices. I will explain how these work so you can understand them better or if you want to include these in your own printed circuit boards, you can then apply that there. This is the schematic diagram of just one of the level shifters on the four bit level shifter shown previously. To understand this, we will consider three different states. First, with no signal on either side, which is that they are either giving an output a high or reading it as an input. Effectively, this means there is nothing pulling the signal down so it should output a logic high at both ends, 3.3 volts at the Raspberry Pi and 5 volts at the Arduino. The voltage of the gate to source junction, pins 1 to 2, is at 0 volts, both are at 3.3 volts. So the MOSFET is switched off, therefore the output at the LV end is based on R1 which pulls up to 3.3 volts and the output at HV end is based on R2 which pulls up to 5 volts, so both ends are at logic high. Therefore, if the output to both is high, or they are using this as an input, then both ends are at their corresponding high voltage. When the low voltage side wants to output a low, then it connects its output to zero volts through the open drain. This sets the source of Q1 at zero volts, and with 3.3 volts at the gate, so the MOSFET turns on. The high end output, which is at the drain, is then pulled down through Q1, so this gives a logic level low at the HV side. I'll now show how we can handle the transition from a high signal at both sides, the first state we talked about, to the 5 volt side setting the bus to low. So the HV side now outputs a low by pulling its end down through the open drain. The drain substrate diode of the MOSFET is pulled down. This is the diode shown inside the circle of the MOSFET. So that can then conduct from the source to the drain, which is the opposite way that it normally conducts when used as a switch. Then, when the source voltage falls below the gate voltage, the MOSFET switches on. With the MOSFET switched on, then both the LV and HV sides 
are pulled to zero volts, giving a logic low at each side. Through these different states, the circuit can work bidirectionally between hardware designed for different voltage levels. The example I used was for I2C, but this can equally be used for other protocols and was used in my earlier video communicating between a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino using SPI. In this video, we've looked at how a MOSFET can be used to change logic levels when connecting devices that work at different voltages. This concludes the videos I've been making on transistors and MOSFETs for now. I'll be creating some more projects soon using the Raspberry Pi, Arduino and the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you're interested in those, please subscribe to my channel and tick the notification icon to be notified when my next video comes out. Hopefully see you on a future video.